Joshua, uh, thanks very much for being here with me. Uh, you and Creole were one of the selected projects in the Cartesi D app incubation program last year. And today mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, dig deeper with you. So how about you tell us a little bit more or a little bit about your own journey as a software engineer and how you got here? So I'm actually an electrical slash environmental engineer by trade. I went to school for that. So I have two degrees in, in those fields in Canada. I actually started out in oil and gas. Um, I started working on all sorts of radar sensors, like IoT based stuff for railway. And I worked there for a number of years. Um, and then I discovered crypto and blockchain. And uh, that's when I got sucked into the whole world of, you know, making cool things in the Web3 space. Um, since then, I've been working on all sorts of startups, building MVPs, prototypes, all the way to production stuff like we do with Creole. Um, basically, I don't know how many projects I've worked on. In both in a freelance setting, but also in a leadership capacity. Creole is probably the first project where I actually, you know, was the, the, the lead of the entire thing as a CTO. So it's where I got to combine everything I know. So all the cool stuff I learned in blockchain, Web3, but I got to combine all the environmental, electrical engineering, IoT stuff together into one single project. Um, and, that's, and that's where I am today, so just working on this kind of stuff. That's great. Thanks. Uh, from the beginning of Cartesi, I was always very interested uh, about the day that we would be able to contribute to the IoT field. And so I'd like to learn more about the whole idea behind what you guys are doing at Creole, especially how mm -hmm. Cartesi fits into this. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so I guess a little bit of history of where, where we are. So Creole started two and a half years ago. Um, and it started, we wanted to basically to improve building controls specifically for lighting. So lighting itself is very old in its technology and we wanted a way to make it wireless and basically just improve on it in general. Then like I came into the, the project very early on and I kind of started pushing more blockchain ideas and like how can we integrate that and you know, your data availability and those kinds of things. Um, eventually we landed on what we are today, which is basically the, the Creole system as it runs is it's a real time, uh, control system for, for commercial buildings where you can control lighting infrastructure as well as like others like HVAC and stuff that's coming online this year. Um, from your smartphone, using smart contracts on Ethereum, there's basically the entire data ownership belongs to the user itself. And, and the entire thing on top of that, while, while it runs like this, it monitors its energy usage and carbon footprint and offsets it in real time. So any building running the Creole system is completely carbon neutral by default. And buildings make up 30% of emissions worldwide. So it's a big deal. Like it's, it's like a really big, and that's, this is where I was talking earlier, like, you know, this is where I got to combine everything, environmental, electrical engineering, and, and blockchain all under one hood. Cartesi finds was basically the crux of our problems. Like for the last two years, we basically, we struggled with, like we had a lot of early ideas that, you know, infrastructure just didn't exist at the time. Like we, we struggled at the very beginning, like how do we get people to interact with wallets and stuff like that. But now like you look at the space and you have like Taurus, Portis, like all sorts of really useful ways to, to handle wallets. And so Cartesi, we had always the problem, okay, so we have wireless communication between Node, but how do we verify that what's actually happening inside the building is true? Right, because we, we actually talked to a lot of security experts in, in England, in Imperial College, specifically uh, cybersecurity people there, we said like, okay, like how do we deal with the fact that, you know, somebody could come to our system and tamper with it? And we never really had an answer. Like we, we just said, well, we'll get to it when we get to it. Like we, <laughs> we'll handle the, the carbon side of it, we'll handle the environmental engineering side of it. And we'll, we'll get to the whole, like, how do we deal with this, this tampering side? And then we, we discovered Cartesian, what we could do was said, wow, like this, this could answer a lot of our problems. I mean, it hasn't been like an easy journey. Like this, this grant program was definitely challenging and we, we had to really come up with some creative ideas to get it together. But ultimately what we've been able to do at this point is we have made, so a little bit more history, uh, mesh networks and how they work. So there's Bluetooth low energy, there's Thread, there's Zigbee, there's, uh, there's a couple other Zmesh. Um, there's a whole bunch of like low frequency mesh networks that exist out there. Um, they all suffer from various problems, most, most notably security, like Bluetooth, low energy, anyone can crack it. Most of our competitors, some of the biggest uh, names out there I've cracked in half an hour on my desk. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's like a serious problem. Um, but anyway, so, so, so we use one, one that's called Thread, and Thread fundamentally uses you know 256-bit encryption on the network level. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't address the problem that one of the nodes has to be internet-facing, but the rest of them don't. 
So basically, there's, there's, there's an opportunity there for those ones to remain isolated from, you know, attacks entirely, and they can just submit data to this one particular box that then is connected to the, to the outside. Um, and so with Cartesia, what we've been able to do is we can take a Cartesian machine on those, like, isolated nodes, basically verify the state of the, the current building infrastructure, you know, check that it's running, and then submit a signed version to the one that's internet connected. The internet connected runs a check, says, yep, that comes from a, one of the nodes in the network, and then sends it out. And then the vice versa. So if you send information to the smart contract, the node verifies, okay, yeah, this is correct. Uh, this came from a smart contract that belongs to this particular network, and I'm going to send, send the, the rest of the data. It basically solved our problem with having to deal with internet connections on all of our devices. Because before we had to think about, like, we were installing these in, in different buildings in, in the UK and in, in Italy and, and a couple other places, um, Finland and Sweden. We always had to think about how to connect, like, internet into these devices. So like the mesh part really didn't make sense. Like we were like, okay, like wireless mesh is cool, it's interesting, but at the very end of the day, these boxes are still Wi-Fi connected. Now it makes perfect sense. There's only one box that we can isolate for like, you know, critical vulnerabilities, and then the rest of them don't have to be connected. So they never are exposed, um, which gives you like a whole bunch more, a bigger layer of security, robustness, the whole thing just becomes a whole lot safer. Um, obviously there's way more overhead that goes with it. And like it's, you know, like I said, where it's, it's been very challenging to get it all together, but fundamentally we've we've basically been able to now create a control system that is completely isolated from the internet but still inter remains internet connected and and that's like a really big step forward because if you look at you know research and science and a lot of papers that came out in 2019 and 2020 about basically internet security in the state of you know buildings controls themselves there was one <laughs> by a german company they they tested some of the most prominent buildings in europe and they found like 95 percent of them were crackable which was like a really bad bad scenario meaning that like it's only a matter of time before someone basically ransomware is a hospital or like you know somewhere really really important like we saw with nhs like they got hit by by ransomware a few years ago in the uk so like iot while it is very interesting and it presents really cool ways of moving technology forward it also presents huge risks and so you have to you can't take those lightly and, and making sure that you you isolate them really really well is kind of where the next step of, of IoT going, and that's where Cartesia fits like perfectly. Like this was like you know that's like the the creme de la creme. Like you can verify everything that's happening. Like you, and and on top of so on top of the security like that security side, now we can be totally sure about um, basically energy calculations that come through our devices. So we can actually you know not only can we say okay yeah it's super secure robust, but also um, the carbon calculations that are happening they're actually verified. Like they're coming from real nodes, they're coming from real devices. It isn't somebody spoofing it. it isn't somebody signing with their own key, basically you know lying about about their uh, energy emissions. So it basically keeps everyone a whole lot more accountable, and, and at the very end of the day, makes buildings truly verified carbon neutral, which is really cool. That's very interesting. I was about to ask you why verifiability, computational verifiability, is key in, in your solution. I think you already gave the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to make this whole uh, system network of devices tamper proof or, or as much as you can mm -hmm. get them to be tamper proof right so yeah. it's quite cool where you want to get with Cartesi and where you are and then further down the line yeah so Cartesi like in this grant program we were basically able to demonstrate a lot of really interesting prototypes um, but we were also like there was a lot of challenges like it was like first getting it to run on ARM like devices like small embedded devices this was built for x86 like there was a lot of like setbacks, I guess, on our side of things, which is fine. Like it was a great learning experience. Like it helped us really understand kind of architecture in a whole lot like more um, robust way, and also kind of begged the question because like before we everything we've built to date has been off the shelf components, but now we're kind of considering okay maybe do we consider building customized hardware again? Because we we considered that a couple of years ago, but then we're like ah that's going to make things hard, and like you know building customized hardware is its own you know, endeavor on its own. But in this case, it actually kind of makes sense because you can write like, you know, trusted execution environments. There's a whole bunch of like really good um, applications that come with it. So where we are this year is basically, we've got, we want to finish and finalize this prototype, basically release everything we've, we've been doing for the last two years open source, finally. I'm super happy about it. Like, <laughs> finally, we've got uh, massive, uh, you know, something to show. Uh, hopefully people are excited by it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. And, from there, I think we want to take the Cartesian machine and roll it out into our production stuff. So we have like a few contracts that got put on hold last year because of COVID, obviously, but now they're basically starting to ramp up again. These are some larger buildings um, that we wanted to, because we had a couple test sites last year that we used 
like 400 fixtures in one and like, you know, 40 in another and a couple hundred in another. So like we had test sites, but I think we want to roll out this system into those for sure. And then put it in like, so one application for instance is coming as a bank, for instance, and they need ultra tight, ultra crisp, like, you know, super secure stuff. So we, we want to basically try and roll this into that um, by, you know, mid this year and see if we can get it in, in the, in the installation. Cause like the thing is with contracting too, is like, uh, it takes a long time. Like we might get it in the plans this year, but like, it won't get built for like two years. So, mm -hmm. so we'll win the contract now, but like we'll have to wait anyway. Um, but that's sort of, that, that's, I mean, it's a different problem, but that's kind of where we want to be. I think what we really want to do is we want to release HVAC controls. So that's like the next set of things. Like lighting is what we know really, really well. Like Chris, my co-founder, he's been in lighting for 25 years, designed lighting control systems, you know, all around the world for, for everywhere. Um, you know, some of the most famous hotel chains are designed by him, you know, big, big corporations, airports, you name it. Um, so we did lighting first and we got, we got really good at it. And now we want to kind of move into the whole KNX side of things. KNX is like another protocol for buildings and which allows you to basically do, you know, control anything from an escalator down to a dishwasher. So imagine securing the entirety of a building with Cartesian is kind of where we want to go is making sure that, you know, actions are happening in a verifiable way and that you can always trust that something's happened, um, in a tamper proof way is also cool too. That's very exciting. I, I really want to see you guys pulling that off. Yeah, so, it's, it's going to be big, big lift. Yeah. I don't know if we'll, we'll do it, but hopefully. And how do you see uh, blockchain and Cartesi in, the, in a bigger picture inside of IoT, smart cities, or, you know, this interface between software and hardware? Yeah. So, I mean, we're actually involved in quite a few projects um, kind of outside of the IoT space, but also related. So a good example is we're working right now with um, a couple uh, agencies in Bermuda, like massive um, insurance agencies. But what they're doing is they're mapping out the carbon sequestration in mangroves in the ocean. And they're basically trying to figure out a way to take that carbon and then address it in like a a blockchain way. So blockchain touches almost every field that we, as we've seen nowadays, but in, in the context of carbon sequestration and monitoring, it's really important um, because data availability in, in the carbon market is, is very poor and data trustworthiness is also very limited. So if you combine IoT along with blockchain and then slap that onto like all the carbon market problems, you, you can solve probably like 90% of the, the issues with the, you know, monitoring, checking something that's actually valid and whether or not like, you know, a particular carbon asset came from somewhere, like all those types of things. So we're trying to help. So we're working on the mangrove project in Bermuda. We're working on a forestry project in the UK and Canada with another company that they're using drones to do like LIDAR scanning. Um, so basically we're trying, we want to try and help them use Cartesi to verify their drone scans, which, is and then we can basically prove like end to end. Okay. They scan the forest carbon credit gets generated. We consume it in our building, building offsets itself in real time. So then you have like this complete end to end solution of, of what you can do. And I mean, like this is just the beginning, like IOT solves a lot of the problems that like have these like, you know, data availability problems like geospatial is like another good, good place that we're working on too, which is like, you know, satellites and satellite imagery. Like it's, it's really hard to know if your GPS coordinates came from a particular satellite and then what direction and fashion, like, you know, knowing where you are is like really important for a lot of these calculations too. So being able to do it in a less, like a more decentralized way, like there's a couple of companies working on this kind of stuff uh, would also be super helpful. I mean, it's the backbone of a lot of really cool innovation that's going to come out and, and like, you know, taking it even further, like green bonds and like basically huge financial markets, they all rely on this really crappy data that like exists. So like car, green bonds, for instance, are, are totally built on like these really bad data models on carbon modeling. Like they're like, they're pretty good for the time, but like if you compare it to the stuff we have today, like you could totally revamp the value structure in, in uh, green bonds and like really change how we invest in sustainable futures. So like there's, there's a whole lot, but like underpinning it all is obviously blockchain and IoT. So like you have that and it's like trust and you can trust the, the data that is, that is there, then you can basically, you know, extract so much more value out of, out of the actual financial product that comes with it. Like a good example of where Cartesi fits in, in kind of broader sense is, is energy markets. So a big problem in the UK is, is we're talking about data availability and, and basically the idea that you being able to understand a particular consumption in a particular profile is really important to being able to predict it, right? So being able to create energy profiles that actually match that. So creating enough energy 
for that particular time in the day to make sure that you know everything's efficient and like how do we get to a lower carbon future well it's becoming a more efficient on, on every front um so in the uk basically they have like what's called like a closed grid almost like it's very hard to inspect what's happening at the site level like basically all the people have all energy producers have is they can measure in real time what the building is consuming but they can never predict what's happening so what they end up doing is they end up building a lot of tools and like i know three or four startups working on tools like this that are basically predictive almost like they try and model the behavior using ai or, or some sort of machine learning technique um to basically predict what the electrical profile looks like now if you could tap into the energy and like the actual energy consumption of the building like tap into the refrigerator and know like yeah that refrigerator is running right now and it's going to run for the next 12 hours or whatever you could actually in real time basically calculate what is supposed to be produced and then be way more efficient on your grid demand instead of like trying to guess so like a really funny example in the uk is you know coronation street is a very famous tv show so basically energy producers would time when they needed to turn on electricity when the commercials came on because everyone would go to the kitchen and turn on the kettle and then you needed more energy <laughs> during the commercials to actually run it. so stuff like that like you don't have to do anymore if you can start verifying what's actually happening so you know one big huge use case we talked about was you know metering data and actually being able to reveal that a particular information is in fact valid so like you know proving that uh you know this demand i need 100 kilowatts right now for this and i need 100 kilowatts for, for the time now, without revealing what it is but also you know sending it upstream to the producers to actually predict the grid reliably means that you have way more efficient grids as a result and then you know cartesian basically fits into like anything any device that runs in a building that runs on the Linux machine could actually you know contribute to this and actually allow for you know way more efficient calculation of how we're supposed to run things so like in North America, the grids are a little bit different because we, like Canada, Mexico, and, and the U.S., we all our grids are tied together and synchronized, um, basically for for generator reasons. So, like if the East Coast goes down, like the West Coast can pick it up and like you know fix it. So, like it's a reliability thing. So it's a it's a cold, totally different design than in, in the U.S. or in the European Union. But here, basically, we have a lot tighter calculation on actual consumption profiles and like knowing more real-time demand it's, it's very rare that you see um you know times where there is no like there's an energy drop off or basically we've incorrectly predicted how much energy is supposed to come up because we kind of know in real time but in europe like because of how, how data is structured it would be really helpful if we had like these types of systems that could verify these things and then just submit them so anyway like that, that's like a, another use case that we, we talked about but like Cartesian in the IoT space has like, I don't know how many applications. It's just, you you really got to, you know, be uh, not creative, but like you just, you just got to look and be like, yeah, totally could fit there, totally could fit here, totally could fit there. Like there's verifiable computation at that scale is, is incredibly, incredibly valuable. That's great to hear from an insider like you who is uh, deeply involved with IoT. Uh, so, yeah, as you see these, uh, these like Linux and, and having Cartesian machines working for ARM devices is, is goes a long way in helping mm -hmm. out in lots of applications in, in this field. I think I'm good in terms of questions on my side. I would just uh, like to ask you if you have any final uh, comments about your vision and mission at Creole uh, or whatever you want to leave as a final message here. Yeah, like, you know, we're always stoked to be making carbon neutral people, places and things. So if you want to do that, like get in touch. Like we're we're open to anything. We we work on a lot of different stuff to try and try and help everybody. Fantastic.